What's up? Welcome back to the State of the Ark podcast. My name is Mike. My name is Kason. This is episode five of our Silent Hill 2 analysis. We left off with Angela uh, having to face the moment, well, I guess one of the moments, one of several moments of trauma with her father's sexual abuse. Yeah. Uh, she kind of ran off calling James a liar that she, she knows what he's really after. She can see through his, uh, what she sees, I guess, is a nice guy act. Uh, he really killed his wife and tried to get with someone else. Anyway, that whole scene. Um, my next note is just when James goes back to the room where Maria was at the bars where we had that scene happen. Yeah. He goes back, but from the other side, right? Yeah. And, she, and she's just dead on the on the bed there. Yeah. Again. <laughs> she, she seems to be dead of a blow to the face. She's lying on a bed with kind of blood. Just yeah. kind of around there. Yeah. So I kind of mentioned last time how I feel like any time he has some interaction where he's drawing closer to Maria, something bad's going to happen to Maria. Yeah. Specifically from Pyramid Head. Because <laughs> Pyramid Head wants him to stop yeah. pursuing Maria and wants him to get back on track to accepting and acknowledging what he did to Mary. So I'm assuming that that's what happened here. Yeah. He had that scene where she said, oh, don't you want to touch me? And right. he's like, all right, just hang tight. I'll, I'll come find a way to you. And then when he finds her, she's been killed again. I'm assuming by Pyramid Head oh, for yeah. that reason. Who could have done this? <laughs> Who could have done this? <laughs> Who could have done this? Uh, okay. Okay. This is where you find the gravestones I was talking yeah. about last time. So the first grave, there's a red stone on it, but it wasn't labeled for anyone, right? I don't think so. Okay, but it wasn't dug out. It was a grave. It was either Mary or... Or Maria, who had just... Or maybe died. Laura. Laura's the fourth That's person. Right. I was looking to for the grave. I was like looking for a size of a grave to see if there was a shorter if one. If it's different. No, nah, they were the all basically the same. Yeah. yeah. So the red... If the red square on the stone represents... But the red square on the stone... The red squares represent repressed memories. Sorry, I meant red stone on the grave. There's oh. a grave that's got a red stone. Gotcha. It, was gotcha. it a square, though? I don't was think it, a, it was. Was it a stone? There's I thought I was thing. misremembering. There's a red thing on it. I wrote red square. I think I meant red stone. Um, if the red stone represents Maria, then the other three would be Eddie, Laura, and Angela. That's what I wrote. The one that we jump into would be a grave for us, right? Which means that one of these people gets to live, I guess. Probably Laura, because none of the graves were short. So she gets to live, but Maria... Angela, Eddie, and us, we all, we all go. Unless that was Mary's grave. Yeah, I'm, I don't think. Now, Maria wouldn't have already been buried, but it doesn't matter. No, this game doesn't make sense <laughs> in that to. kind of it's way. Yeah, to. so that could easily still be Maria's grave. Sure. It could also be Mary's grave. Anyways, either way, uh, Laura gets to live, so congrats for her. Um, yeah, we end up jumping down, and it's just like one of the bottomless pits, but it's really important that it's, <clears throat> that it's like it's a grave that we jump into. Like yes. the willing, the voluntary um, acceptance of death, of one's own death, right? Mm. Uh, some would call it ego death, right? Where sure. you approach this area and you jump into the grave on your own and it's a black pit and you go all the way down. I believe this is the bottom. I believe this is the final pit you jump into. And it's when you kind of really just kind of let go of yourself when you jump into your own grave and you're willing to come what may, right? You're basically giving up your own life. And uh, this is where we finally reach the bottom, as far as I could tell. Yeah. And Eddie, this is where Eddie, Eddie is there. Yep. <clears throat> so, again, I think this is another example of the over or the, with the other worlds of both characters kind of colliding or okay. crossing into each other. I think we're seeing a little bit of what Eddie sees. So this, yeah. like, freezer area that he's in with all this hanging Dude. meat. But yeah, it's like so a butcher's room. It's like, like a, a butcher's room. Yep. And there's a bunch of corpses around, I'm Just pretty hanging. sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, I couldn't tell if they were humans or if they were like cow cow meat just hung up. I think there's know? probably a few reasons, there are a few mm. ways you could read this. I mean, because we talked about Eddie being the, the gluttonous pig. Yeah. Right? So you could see it as, yeah. as uh, you know, as that, but you could also see it as people he's murdered you could see it as him himself i've seen some people talking about how it sort of represents him like 
Yeah, so in the first room, you're right. There's this this mist, but I think it's it's just cold air, right? Oh, Kinda like we're coming in a freezer? In. Yeah, like oh, a freezer area. I, okay, that makes... Okay, interesting. So we've entered a frozen area. That yes. makes sense. And there's like these dead people. You see this? Like these corpses just kind of pile up around and blood on the yeah. walls and things like that. Yeah. Um, he goes into the other room, and we're going to talk about the fact that he turns on James here in yeah. a minute because you shoot him a bunch of times. But you go into the next room, and there's all these bodies but do you see how they have like pants on them that's like they're wearing oh, shorts this? it's like stitched yeah it's almost like what they're the wearing heck? shorts and it's like the, the upper part humans. of the torso is like big and fat and they kind of get scrunched into these oh skinny gosh, little leg things I did not notice that. so if you look at him <laughs> that's crazy he it wears kind of look like shorts him. that kind of look like that so you could see that, that almost being like of these meat. sacks of meat, yeah. useless sacks of meat. Yeah. And I think he does say something like that. That's some, mm. some, some thing that like what one of his bullies said. He always busted my balls. You fat, disgusting piece of shit. You make me sick. Fat mm. ass, you're nothing but a waste of skin. Mm. Uh, you're so ugly, even your mama don't love you. So I think that, that, that those hanging sacks of meat are almost maybe what he sees himself as okay yeah right That's like his, that could it's be like his prison sure hmm. and he's having to like he's looking at what he as much value as he puts on himself is like those just those sacks of s flesh those those yeah. useless uh how did he put it um a waste, waste of, of skin. skin and it's yeah. weird that that like the, it looks like shorts are just kind of stitched to the bottom of yeah. them so i think they're kind of meant to to look representative of him so this That's is what creepy. he's seeing in his other world he's basically just seeing himself as this useless fat disgusting uh waste of flesh and every monster he comes across is mocking him reminding him of this um and that's what he's having to deal with he's having to deal with that He's projecting his insecurity about his his looks, his unathleticness, or his unathleticism, <laughs> his uh, unattractiveness, all of this. Hmm. And is he going to be able to face that without resorting to murder? Um, which obviously he fails the si uh, Silent Hills test. Right. right? Um, he he's he's not able to face all of that without turning to that. Um, he talks about what he did. He finally kind of admits it, right? Mm. Um, well, I guess it's part of that same quote. You know what? It doesn't matter if you're smart, dumb, ugly, pretty. It's all the same once you're dead. And a corpse can't laugh. I liked that line a lot. Yeah. A corpse can't laugh. Can't laugh at me, mm. right? I, they can't make fun of me anymore. From now on, if anyone makes fun of me, I'll kill them just like that. And this, so he's totally snapped. Yep. And <laughs> it, it seems like a really dumb mistake. Oh, for James? <laughs> for James to make. <laughs> but what he says is, Eddie, have you gone nuts? Have you gone nuts? Clearly what he means is he's, he's trying to reach him. He's just trying to be right. like, come on, like you can't do that. Like, right. what are you doing? What are you thinking? He's trying to appeal to him. <laughs> But Eddie takes that as he, he's mocking him again. Oh, I knew it. You too? You too? Yeah. You're just like him, James. And he's like, hey, I didn't mean anything. Don't mm. bother. I understand. You've been laughing at me all along, haven't you? Ever since we first met. I'll kill you, James. See, yep. And, he's, and that starts the battle where you got to defend yourself as he shoots you. Um, were you going to say something there? No, just that... Um that's the, just the projecting his shadow onto us. Right? Yes, it's what you were talking about. Yeah. You were talking about last time. Yeah. It's so, a, this, man, this happens all the time too. It's something that I've, I've, I've really observed in, in a lot of people I'm close to where I can watch two people interacting hmm. and I see the way that they really said what they said or I see the intention behind it and um, I see the other person just totally it miss wrong. it. Yeah. And, and you cannot convince them. Right. When you try, that's not what she didn't say it like that. She said it like yeah. this, and this is what you. No, no, and they they swear yeah. by it. That's not how they said it. That's not what they said. They're talking to their own shadow. Yes, they, they weren't actually talking to a person. They were talking to this projection idea of you know what, like an enemy almost, and yeah, and that's the result, right? You didn't see it. Yeah, it's it's in, and your perception, yeah, your own perception is your reality, and so if you. Right already believe the things Eddie believes 
because yeah, he had legitimate bullies, real right. people who actually did right. say these awful things to him. But the more that happens and the more of a pattern of thinking you get into, you start seeing that in people who have no intention of right. saying something Even like that. Even just the slightest hint of it and then their pattern recognition turns on and, and puts that pattern onto you and says, oh, like even just like, have you gone nuts, right? Even yeah. though like, well, maybe he had been asked that exact question before um, from a meaner person. Sure. And so as soon as you give him just a little bit of reason, oh gosh, okay, so South Park, right? <laughs> so remember, so um, they're going, do you remember the tree fitty? No, just give yeah, him tree fitty. Tree I'm fitty, trying yep. to persuade him with tree fitty. <laughs> so the Girl Scouts show up at this guy's house and it's just Girl Scouts, right? And it's like, oh, I'll buy some cookies. And then as soon as she says, uh, that'll be tree fitty. As long as they hear the number 350, he goes, it was about that time I realized that this Girl Scout was about 20 feet tall and looked like a monster from the Cretaceous <laughs> period. <laughs> it's like, okay, as soon as they got a little hint, then it was like, boom, their their projection of the dragon just like, boom, a- attached to this girl. And then they it became this whole kind of thing, right? right? Anyways, that's, by the way, that's what's happening there in that South Park episode. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, it's the projection. As soon as they get a hint, boom, the pattern recognition turns on and they're just like, that's it. That's what I'm dealing with the monster. It's here. Yeah. It was disguised. And this is, is in large part a defense mechanism. It's the mind trying to defend itself from further trauma or harm or whatever it might be. It's true, yeah. And so your, it's like your defenses soon, turn yeah, on. Yeah, as soon as you get a hint that this is where this person might be going with yep. this, okay, I've got to uh, defend myself now. Yeah. Now I've got to kill James. Right, yeah. Who otherwise has been nice to me so far. Right. But nope, all along you were all one of along. them. Yeah. Because he can't bear to take any more uh, uh, abuse, particularly for someone he seemed to like or that seemed to maybe be his friend. That would be too hard too painful yeah. to accept. So now he's got to like turn the defenses on. And so that's, that's mm-hmm. why that happens. That's why we project in the first place. It's right. It's often defense. defense mechanism. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's what happens there. So you end up fighting him. Uh, he goes into the other room. It's actually kind of a lot of dialogue while you're fighting him too. He says some really interesting things. Well, I'll guess one of the things um, he says, this was great. He says, you and me are the same. Yes. That's what Angela had said, said as to well. us before. Right. I this put, is another I reason this, why I think these are the real people. Um, Not just, well, well you could also a, read it. <laughs> <laughs> See, you could also read it as we are the same because we're the same person. That's the way I read it. Yes. <laughs> I read it, we're the same, meaning like, dude, we're, we, are, we are the same. We're the same person. <clears throat> I'm a, an aspect of you. Yes, right? yes. Yeah. That's the way I read it. Uh, do you know what it does to you, James, when you're hated, picked on, spit on just because of the way you look? After you've been laughed at your whole friggin' life, uh, that's why I ran after. Um, that's why I, I ran away after I killed the dog. Run mm. away like a scared little girl. Yeah, I killed that dog. It was fun. I tried to. It, it tried to chew on its own guts. Finally, died all curled up in a ball. Then he came after me. I shot him too, right in the leg. He cried more than the dog. He's gonna have a hard time playing football on what's left of that knee. So. I, so it seems like he snapped at some point in real life, not here in Silent Hill. Hmm. And I think this is what he's talking about, this murdering of this dog and shooting yeah, of this previous football thing. player. Um, I'm guessing the football player was some bully of his at school and that he specifically went after this guy and the dog, his, the football player's dog came after him, yeah. killed the dog, shot the kid, I don't know if it doesn't, it, I mean, it seems like he's still alive. It seems like he didn't actually kill the right, kid. Cause it's like, you can't play football right. on that knee. Meaning, yeah, he's alive. You wouldn't be able to play football at all or any <laughs> chance of you're dead. So he, he shot the kid in the knee, but he shot the dog and killed the dog. So yeah, that's what he actually did. And that's why he was drawn to silent Hills over the guilt of having done this. So he, this is the, the thing that he's supposed to be grappling with here that he's failing to grapple with and is now trying to murder James for mocking and making fun of him. So he's like failing the litmus test that is Silent Hill, (laughs) the the town, right? And uh, uh, the thing that I thought was really interesting about the end of this, uh, nobody will ever forgive me. Oh yeah, you think it's okay to kill people? 
You need help, Eddie, says James. Right, yeah. He says, don't get all holy on me, James. The town called you too. You and me are the same. Mm -hmm. which we're, we're not yeah. like other people. Don't you know that? So Eddie's calling him out. Obviously, you're here for the same reason I am. Right. Like, don't you try to tell me, like, what's right and wrong, right? Now, when you actually kill Eddie, what James says here is really, uh, really enlightening or illuminating to the theme of the game, I feel. He yeah. says, Eddie, Eddie, I, I killed a human being, a human being. Because everything we've killed up to yeah. this point have been monsters. Oh, true. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's right. Now he's killed a person, mm -hmm. but it's in killing a person that we're able to that admit he to ourselves. says, Mary, did you really die three years Mary, ago? Did you really die? Yeah. Cause How? we kill Eddie, right? Yes. And we're like, I killed somebody and we're immediately not actually concerned about Eddie. We're like, as soon as we say the words, I killed somebody, then yep. it's like Mary. Boom. Everything goes to Mary. Mm -hmm. Mary, did you really die three years ago? Yep. The question is, ha, no, she died two years ago. Or, you know. Much uh, earlier than three years ago. She died. Yeah. Sooner than three years ago. But um, the, the, the question being, not so much the time frame, but... Did he, did he kill Mary? He won't ask himself that question. Yeah. But it's juxtaposed it's against the almost, I killed someone. He's, again, he's almost He's there. so close. But he's I love, almost there. I love that this realization is, because we're at the bottom, right? We jumped yeah. all the way down, all these abysses, right? All these holes, all the way down to the bottom. And that's where this finally, we almost, we're on our, we're on the way back up, right? We're about to admit it. We're about to go explore and we're about to move ourselves um upwards mm -hmm. instead of continually going uh, down. We finally got to the root point of all the pain, the root cause of everything. And even though he won't admit it yet, we're, we're back on to the, to, we're back on to Mary and we're back on to um, him having killed somebody. So yep. it's very good. So it's, it's in killing a human being that, wait a minute, did Mary really die three years ago? It's that right. that act of killing a human being is what triggers the wait a minute did she really die right he's so close he's, he's so close. close to realizing and he's it. got a lot of obstacles before his brain will allow him to to see the truth of that day but yeah he's on his way right um so now i didn't really have much that i could draw and i was curious to see if you did from this really long boat ride I got leading notes, through yeah. the lighthouse that goes through the fog to the hotel where yeah. he used to stay with her. So if you've got anything for that section, uh, go for it. Um, it's not much, but there's a light, right? You know where to go because there's like a light and he starts rowing and that light gets bigger and it's, it's, the, it's the house on the other end of the lake. But I put down here, um, here James Sunderland goes on a boat to row into the water. James of the land set apart <clears throat> goes out on the lake rowing to the other side. This is like the deliverance out of Egypt across the Red Sea. Um, he's finally, he's, he's going towards freedom. That's where he's moving. But he's got to make this passage through water in order to get there. Um, so um, this is something along the lines of uh, rebirth and uh, baptism, right? Which is, you know, you, you, you make the journey through water, you jump into the grave, as he did earlier, you cross through the water, you emerge onto the other side as a reborn kind of figure, and now begins, you know, the next, the next step, right? The, what, the 40 years in the wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> but now begins, you know, you're moving forward, you're on the right path. That's the idea. Sure. Um, I take note of the fact that he says, this place hasn't changed at all in three years, huh? Mm. Um. And as you're going through the hotel, it seems to be more or less, not like in pristine order per se, but certainly much better kept. That's what I wrote, yeah. Than anywhere else we've been. Way nicer. Every, this whole town is just filthy. It's yeah. Just filthy. And this building, like, it looks nice. Yeah. Like, it's good. The carpet is new and everything is, seems well taken care of. And so he says, this place hasn't changed in three years. Huh? Now, of course, after the sequence is over, you find that it's actually burned and it's leaking and there's mm, flooding yeah. downstairs and yeah so it's not that way but this is how he's seeing it mm. in the moment right um we'll, we'll kind of circle back to that in a bit but james finds laura inside yeah she's playing on the piano too. yep <laughs> um kind of just funny. oh she plays a note on the piano it scares him Dude, like yeah. startles him scared right? you she's <laughs> such a she's such a joker i love it <laughs> 
Um, so she talks about how Mary wrote a letter to her for her eighth birthday. Yeah. And James asks her uh, how old she is now. And she says that she just turned eight last week. Eight, yeah. So yeah. last week she turned eight. Mm. Mary wrote a letter to her one week ago. Yeah. So Mary didn't die three years ago. She didn't die two years ago. She didn't die a year ago. She died within the last week. Well, uh, what, what he <laughs> says is, wait, is she really dead then? Yes. Because he's stuck on this three years ago thing, right? right? Now, three years. I don't know. There's, symbol, there's symbolism there in terms of the number three, I would say. Um, and it feels like three years. It feels like a number of years, and three is the number. Um, but he kind of... Um, and instead of accusing Laura of lying, right? Which does he? Does he accuse her of lying? I don't um, think he does. I don't think he does I think here. He slowly starts to have hope that Mary might maybe still. Yeah, be alive. I think here he accepts it because I wrote down that he says, uh, "Oh, she couldn't have died three years ago." That's what he realizes when she says that. Oh, so well, he's, what he's I like, g- I took from that was, "Oh, maybe she's still." Or sure. Well, okay, never mind. Then she died a week ago. She didn't die three years ago. For whatever reason, I took that to mean she didn't die back then. Meaning, if she only died a week ago, that means I didn't kill her. Uh, whatever I did, she lived, and I'm not a killer. And she just died last week of something else that I'm not aware of, right? Like, oh, I could it's see almost you. like he's sort of like he's getting close, uh, but he's trying to find ways to where Still he's not, not the one responsible. There yet. Yeah. yeah, he's yeah. not quite there yet. Um, here's something I forgot to mention, and I'm sure we're oh. going to have a ton of comments already. Uh-huh, uh, yeah. Did you, again, this, this requires you to go into your inventory and examine oh, items. Yeah. After the fight with. Um, with Eddie, the letter that you arrived in Silent Hill with, the one from Mary, the one mm-hmm. with In My Restless Dreams, yes. uh, that uh, that yeah. place, Silent Hill, it's, it's now an empty piece of paper. There is no letter. There is no writing I on it at all. That. Wow. And that happens basically for this section once you arrived here. So after, the, after you killed Eddie and you're arriving at this lighthouse, there's no longer any writing. It's just a blank piece of paper. Hmm. So Good he didn't actually receive any letter hmm. from Mary leading him here. So we'll, Good we'll to know. keep going on that. But the paper um, was real. The paper is <laughs> actually the paper disappears eventually too. So <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, um, but th- this is great because this is the first time Laura doesn't just run away from us. Right. Right. She talks to us. She gives us this letter. Right. Do we read it right here, or is it a little bit later? Um, well, she's going to give us another letter, but then she realized she dropped it somewhere. That's she right. She runs off That's to try right. to find it. Okay, but she's not, like, scared of us no. anymore. She doesn't hate us at the moment. Well, because the letter that she does have, it w- that one that Mary wrote to her for mm-hmm. her eighth birthday, says, look, um, I know that you have this opinion oh. of James because of the things I've said right. about him, but, like, give but him a chance. He's a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. like, underneath... He, he doesn't laugh a lot and mm-hmm. he can be kind of rough on the exterior, but like underneath that, he's a really kind man or he's a really right. sweet person or something like that. Yeah. So uh, I think Laura is now trying to give James a chance, which ends up backfiring majorly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah. And I see that note here a little bit. Um, yeah. But before that, we have a nice puzzle, which is great. Um, this puzzle is three. The, the number three does occur quite frequently. Yeah. I was a little upset. I feel like I missed something. I made a prediction in episode two or three um, that there would be a golden ring that would show up that would be meaningful in some way. Mm-hmm. And is that, anyways, there's a copper ring and a lead ring, but there, there no never, gold ring. as far as I could tell, there was no gold ring. I don't know if I missed something or if they just left that one at two, which they've done a couple of times. But um, I feel like I, I feel like there should have been something else there. Unless the ring is just, it's Mary, right? She's the golden ring. She's the, well, when you get married, you have a ring. That's typically how it goes. Anyways. Yeah. Okay. So these ones are Cinderella, Snow White, and the Little Mermaid. These are more aspects of the feminine, more ways of exploring the anima. Finding different aspects of the feminine and putting them together in a puzzle is very analogous to his journey to find Mary. He is trying to put her together. Mm. So, yeah, and then the puzzle being Cinderella, Snow White, Little Mermaid. I don't know. You could come up with some idea for, like, the Little Mermaid resembling more of, like, like a young kid. And anyways, that maybe the Little Mermaid, Snow White, and Cinderella may represent Angela, Maria, and uh, Laura kind of in their own way. Right. But anyways, he's kind of putting this all together now. Putting it together. 
Yeah, Laura's a lot nicer now. She gives us the letter. She isn't running away, but she tells us not to tell Rachel. Yeah, Rachel, Rachel is the nurse yes. who took well, care of them. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> you know who Rachel maybe is? Rachel might be the nurse monster. Oh. I'm, I'm only coming up with this right now based on what you've said. This is not in my notes. Whether or not he had like a... Well... When he lusted after As Rachel, it turns the out, nurse. the name Rachel comes from the from, Bible. Yeah, the Rachel from... from Rachel yeah. was Jacob's wife yes. in the Bible. Yes. Well, I think Jacob had a couple wives actually, but anyways, this is kind of where I'm going here, that Jacob is James. The they're, same name. The we same talked name. about that before, yeah. And Jacob has a couple of wives. Anyways, one of them is Rachel. Um, and Rachel is possibly a, another type of like anima thing that he feels bad about. Anyways, I don't know if this is like a huge thing. I didn't explore it much. But it is interesting that he sees this female nurse that we have to kill and get past that's part of our shadow. And the name is Rachel of the nurse, of this woman's nurse, of his wife's nurse. So I was just going to point out that Jacob's first wife was Leah and Rachel was the yeah. second wife. So that, I mean, I think you I, might be onto something with that. I believe that that's correct. Uh, yeah. Because, yeah, it's like, obviously Mary would have been his wife and then maybe he wanted Rachel, who was the nurse. That could totally be, I mean, yeah. I don't know if it's on purpose, but like there's at least something you could pull from that. Because, yeah, I think so. Rachel was not Jacob's first wife. But and he then, really then wanted he, Rachel. He, he had to work, he had to... Um, Serve him Seven even years. longer to get Rachel. Yeah. So yeah. So he had. That's he served Laban for a bunch of time because yeah. he wanted to marry Rachel, but Laban married Tim to Leah instead. Well, first. Yeah, because there was a veil, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like a deceit thing, and then he had yeah. to go even longer to marry Seven Rachel. Seven more years. So yeah. So, anyways, yeah, that's fascinating. So there's the thing right there. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So <laughs> Rachel was the one he really wanted. But he was married to Leah. It's, uh, there could be a connection. There could there. be a thing. There could, there could be, be a, a thing, thing there. Yeah. So then it also means you, uh, E-W-E, like a female sheep. Um, Laura says that Rachel was our nurse, right? Yeah. So she's saying our. I don't know exactly why, but other well, than Well, I think that, Laura was I also know, in the hospital. I but. know, but I'm saying it could also mean other things. Oh. Okay. So, yes, that oh, I, I they, had, that. they had the same nurse. Uh, Laura took the letter from Rachel's locker, right? Now, that's kind of interesting. So Rachel never gave Laura this letter. It was in... Rachel's locker and Laura showed up and like stole it from Rachel's locker. So right. Yeah. That's fascinating. Um, so Mary says, yeah, don't be too hard on the sisters. Is this Laura's sisters? Laura has sisters. Oh, I, and this is where I think there's an allusion to the fact that Laura was an orphan. Um, ah. So I think she's talking about like okay. her sisters at the orphanage. Oh, that would make sense. Yeah. Right. And then Mary says, I'm far away now in a quiet, beautiful place. Um, silent hill she's in a right. silent anyways there's something there um i wouldn't describe this place as beautiful at the moment uh but it's definitely quiet so there's a thing um then you have uh she says underneath james is a really sweet person uh she also says i love you like my own daughter i thought that that was a very interesting line yeah i was hoping to adopt you so you're right there is an orphanage she right. she's she's up for adoption it seems yeah yeah i would that so she, if Mary made it through her illness, she was going to adopt Laura and, uh, her and James would then be parents, right? which they are currently not. Yes. Um, and Laura would be their adopted child. Um, and there would be some idea there. Maybe the reason why, <clears throat> the reason why Laura is here in Silent Hill with James is because that's the lost, like the, he kind of lost the opportunity to have her as a, as a daughter because Mary died. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's maybe guilt there too, because now Lori's just going to stay in the orphanage till she's like a teenager, probably until she's 18. Right. And then who knows what she'll do. Um, and so he's got some guilt there. Yeah. That could be something. Um, do you have any other notes before making it up to the room? Um, I've got, tape? <clears throat> uh, James has hope. Uh, no, no, the videotape's my next one. Okay. <clears throat> Whew. This is a lot to break down. Yeah. Here, this so. one's going to be huge. When he finally makes up to the room where he and uh, he and Mary had stayed on a previous yeah. visit, I don't know if it was like they came here a lot and that's why she called it the special place, or if they came here once and then he promised to come back and never did. That's yeah, maybe. I don't um, know. But they had stayed in this room on a previous visit, 
And there's a, a television there, a cassette, like a VCR. He puts the tape in and uh, watches a scene where Mary, essentially the scene where she makes him promise to bring her back to Silent Hill. I wish we could stay longer, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah. But right after that, there's a scene where he suffocates her in her sick bed. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. And now, this is not literal here. He didn't film himself killing his wife, right? This <laughs> that's was... Not, yeah. That's not uh, what you're meant to take away from this. This is... The videotape represents him unlocking the yeah. repressed memory. Now... Yeah, there was he, no actual... Yeah. yeah, right. There was an actual recording of him right. killing... Why would you do that? Now, if, you're, if you go back to the apartment building at the beginning of the game, remember when you saw that... She, um, you have the note. I wrote so, it down, yeah. Where James saw that person that is the same character models himself yeah, who watching was dead. a television with static on it and had been shot yeah. in the head. Uh, that was essentially a foreshadowing to this moment, the bullet of truth, right? Mm, I see, okay, sort sure. Sort of thing, because that's the same television that that dead corpse oh, was, was sitting it? in front okay, of okay. as the one that he's watching here. Nice. So it's almost like a foreshadowing of where this is going. Like he's mm. going to have to penetrate this illusory sort of, <laughs> uh, well, well, his repressed memories. He's going to have to break yeah. through those to get mm. to the truth of what happened. And it's, depending on which ending you do, I guess, <laughs> it well, will, it'll, it'll lead to his own death. But um, Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, what did you? What note did you take down for that? Because oh uh, well, I've got a lot, but I just I just wrote "Dead James" in front of white noise, and I assumed that I would be able to talk about it. But <laughs> that's that's more or less the idea. Um, th there, even though James, like the blood, is in front on the TV and he's laying in the couch dead, it's still almost like um, he would have killed himself, mm -hmm. right? Like it looks like the way the blood is there and the way the situation is set up, it would seem as though um, somebody else killed James. Uh, but in that, in the, you know, in the apartment, however, I would say that it's, it probably was trying to say that this person killed themselves. Mm. Um, and then the, the answer to the question, who, who could have, who would have done such a thing, right? Yep. Is you, right? You well would have done such a thing. And that would be, it, this is like a, a way of him perceiving this exact thing that after watching this tape, he now has two options to kill himself <laughs> or to keep going. Right. Yes. And he's seen a vision of what one of those options would be, which is yes. you're just you're in front of the static. It's there, and you're just you're gone. Um, and but then he's going to choose a different way this time. Not to jump ahead because there's more to talk about with this. But remember, in the next scene with Angela, uh, she asks for the knife back. Oh. And, he's, and he won't give it to her, right? And she's, ah, oh, saving it for yourself? Mm, yeah, and he says, me? Right. No, I'd never kill myself. I would never. Of course he wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Oh, who was it? There's this famous, Camus? Camus. I think his name was Camus. He wrote that the only true philosophical question for humans is whether or not to kill yourself. <laughs> That's like the only conundrum for humanity. Okay. Anyways, it's, um, <laughs> it's a heck of a statement. Um, sure. But there's something about that that I see... I, I, anyways, uh, James is clearly get, grappling with that kind of stuff. Right. Um, on the tape, um, it looks like you can faintly see a bed as Mary is coughing. It looks like I wrote that. I said, wrote, oh, it looks like maybe James is killing Mary. In this. <laughs> <laughs> you can't actually tell all that well. It's pretty, um, you can't. It's hard to see. Now, I just saw this, yeah. which was just put into our Discord for uh, $10 and above patrons who join us live for these. It looks like a video of what it says, an uncensored Silent Hill 2 videotape. Okay. Which I so didn't know existed. Somebody took out the filter of static. So let's see this and see if there's something different. It would be at that, the end. Oh, there it would be. So right around here. So this is without the static. Ahead. Yeah, we're kind of watching the uncensored version here for those who are listening to this audio only. And yeah, it's not... I wonder if this was the Japanese version or something. Yeah, that makes it... Slightly more obvious. You can, yeah, she's screaming more. Yeah, that makes it way more obvious than what was actually in the game that I played. <laughs> mm. And it makes it very obvious she did not want that, right? She was fighting against it. 
Yes, she uh, didn't want to die. This is one of the. Um, this is one of the things. Uh, how would you put it? People. So she would have said, "Hey, hey, James, I don't want to live anymore." Right. right? Put me out of my misery. She would have. It's one thing to say that. This is true. I've heard this story a million times. Um, I'm sure it's uh, selective in that whoever it was is retelling the story was trying to tell a specific story, but I still think that there's probably some good truth in it. Um, years ago, uh, there was, well, this still happens today, but there was somebody who did um, a documentary on people who jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge but survived. Oh. Um, and because for the most part, it's a pretty high, it's high up. As soon as you hit the water, you die. Um, but every now and then people, the trajectory is right, you'll go right into the water. And then um, those people uh, would swim back to shore and um, this, uh, I think it was a documentary. I can't really remember where I where this came from, but uh, somebody would then ask them, um, well, years later. So what um, what was your thought process here? Like what happened? And they were saying, oh, I had all these problems. I had you know this and this, and I was really not wanting to live anymore. Um, and then they would always say, generally speaking, um, as soon as I jumped, as soon as death became inevitable that they realized that all of their life's problems were solvable, except for mm. the fact that they had just jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. That was the only problem they now had, and they didn't want to die anymore. And it was this, like, I don't know, it's this, once once you take that leap, once the thing happens, then it's like, wait, I don't actually want this. I don't actually want this. Never mind. Cancel, cancel, escape, mm. like, you know, change, pause. Um, and for the most people, that that's not really an option, but... Um, Anyways, uh, even if Mary did want, theoretically, the idea of dying, when it comes down to it, most humans are going to be like, never mind, like, mm. I, I don't actually want this. So um, even though, yeah, she may have said that she wanted it, um, any human would react this way to being killed. Yeah. Certainly, pro certainly probably not the way she wanted to die. Right, I mean... she did want it. Even people who w want to commit suicide, they don't want the pain. They don't want to suffer right. long through the death process, right? They just want to not exist And anymore, there's right? kind of not a lot of ways to do that. <laughs> um, right. It's like yeah, death is easy. pretty much painful almost no matter what you do. Yeah. And so... I, I would assume that even... Even if she wanted to be suffocated by a pillow, she would still be screaming. Like, that's... Anyways, we're getting pretty dark here, man. Yeah. Oof. Let's... Let's get back into this here. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. <clears throat> he realizes what he did. Yeah. And Laura comes into the room. You know, uh, oh, you know, looking for Mary... And, and he tells her that she's dead. And she tries to deny, deny this at first. Like, no, that can't be right. So she, because she was so sick. And then he has to admit, no, it's because I killed her. Right. And then Laura says all these horrible things that James deserves to hear. <laughs> so um, I put, it looks like maybe James is killing Mary in this. She was terminally ill. She was going to die and was upset. And so she showed two different sides to him. The side that just wanted to give up and die, and then the side that clung to life and to him. Yeah. And Maria would represent the side that clung to life and to him, and not the side that wants to die. Um, and this, once again, is the Eros Thanatos. Um, Maria sure. kind of embodies both. It's sure. the battle between both, where yeah. she's like, she doesn't really know what she wants. Um, so... Mitch is, or Mix brings up kind of a, an important point here. We just talked about the uncensored version of that scene, right? Um, I heard it said that the uncensored videotape made people see James as more unredeemable and unsympathetic huh. as compared to the censored one, where people were more inclined to take a sympathetic approach to James. And not that I want to read too much intention uh, on behalf of the 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 creators of the story into this necessarily but i i did get the sense playing this game that they at least don't want you to see him as unredeemable mm, um yes okay that's right yeah. or 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 that they don't Worthy want you of... to at least not be able to understand where he's coming from they don't want you to at least to see him as a complete monster yeah he's not a mur it's not well he wouldn't be a murderer per se 
<laughs> it depends on how you want to define it, though, man. I mean, it's definitely murder. Uh, yeah. But it's but they're tr- I think what they tried to do was build context around that murder in which you go, it's wrong, but I get it more than, oh, my goodness, how could you? You suck. You're a terrible person. Now he is. Whoops. He is all of those things. Like, it's right. not for it, it is an irredeemable thing to do. Right. Yeah. And, and maybe it's hard to understand for people who have never been caretakers before mm. for somebody that they care about, right? Mm. Like, um, not that I really have been because I haven't, but I have had, uh, you know, someone close to me who was sick a lot and, and mm. who needed a lot of help and, it, I, it's, it's, it's something that you really struggle with where mm. you feel this conflict of it's the right thing to take care of this person that you really do genuinely love. And I believe James genuinely loved Mary. Right. He really did. Right. Like that wasn't like, oh, I never loved her and now she's like this and this right. sucks and I wish I could be with Rachel. It's not like that. Right. That's not his thought process. He really cares about her. But for three years... He can't have the intimate relationship with his wife that is the point of being married to someone. You're, you want to be with yeah. that person and close to that person. You can't have that. That's denied to you for three years. And this person's screaming and yelling at you all the time. Mm-hmm. And it's getting increasingly worse. Every time you're with them, they're just angry at you. They, they want you to go away. You try to do nice gestures. You try to, to do your very best to, to uh, you know to take care of them and to be there for them. And all they do is berate you for it. Um, It's really hard to understate the toll that that would take on somebody and how Mm. trapped you would feel. And these, these things that arise, this attraction to other women, this, like all of this stuff, like, yes, it's wrong. We all know that it's wrong to give into that. We know that's wrong to, um, betray your wife. It's wrong to be, uh, to not be loyal to your wife in that right. situation. We all know that that's wrong, right. but we can't sit here and pretend that that's not a hard thing, right. a really, really hard thing for someone to go through. And then just sit there and, and, and <laughs> from our high horses and just, mm-hmm. you know, uh, condemn them for this. And I think that mm-hmm. that's more the point or, or the perspective they're trying to build context around for James here is underneath it all. He really is a sweet person and he really is a kind person and possibly in most ways, a good person, but even a good kind, sweet person can do a terrible thing. And that's the scary part about it is that we're all capable. If we're not careful of falling into a victimizing ourselves Right. To the point where we justify horrible things because we can't look away from our own suffering. Uh, and and, and I, I'm, I'm not sure like exactly where I want to go with that thought. But all I'm trying to say is like it's, it's really not easy. I watched my mother take care of my grandmother terminally ill with cancer for a long time. And... Obviously she loved her mother, but that was a, it took a huge toll on my mother. Yeah. I watched my mother care, be a caretaker for her sister for years, for, for almost six years, Mm. uh, until she passed away. Um, there, I mean, of course we all want to look at and, and sort of feel the sympathy for the person suffering with the terminal illness. And they're the ones really having to face their own mortality and, and, uh, you know, the really scary part of it all, but there's a, a huge amount of suffering and a, a large toll that it takes on the person who has to watch someone go through that every day and try to yeah. keep lifting them out. And you run out of energy for that. And, you know, you start having, you kind of wish they, you kind of wish around. it would end yeah. not only because you don't want to see them suffer anymore, but because you don't want to suffer anymore. And that's okay. That's a, that's a human thing to feel. Right. You just can't give into it. And unfortunately, James gave into it. 
Yeah. And that was, that was the part that, that he's condemned for, right? So w- how long was she in the hospital? Do we know this? I don't think it states it outright, I but I want to say it was three-ish years. I, I, my guess is three years. Yeah. And him saying, oh, she died three years ago. Yes. When she really only died last week. What he's really saying is that the real her, yes. the, the Mary that he loved, he loved died, died three, three years, years ago. ago. Exactly. Right? And when she went into this hospital, she became a different person. She probably used to resemble something closer to Maria when she was younger, right? Yes, right. No. So, yeah, I think that that's, that's the context they're trying to build around this. And so, yeah, if the videotape on the censored was leading people to the conclusion that James was a monster and he's unforgivable, that's probably not what they wanted players to right. arrive at as a conclusion. So that w- could have been the reason for the censoring. And if, if so, I guess that makes sense. Um, so thank you for, for sharing that mix. Appreciate it. So my um, prediction would have been the, I, I, I did pretty good for this game. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would have guessed that he choked her when she died because mm. she was wearing the choking necklace. Oh, now, oh Maria wears Maria the choker. Maria wore the choker. And w- well, that still works because it she is still, it's still asphyxiation. It's, 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 it's still, still restricted breathing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's asphyxiation. Still works. But there's some way that you, there's some dark way of looking at Maria <laughs> and and that choker as some type of pro- shadow projection, right, of James, where it's like, oh, she likes being choked, mm. right? She she wears, this is the kind of thing she likes, like right? You know, like I could see some dark shadow kind of like projection there, uh, mm. some imagery there that could, I mean... And here's the thing. You can just talk about how awful James is, right? But, sure. <laughs> or how he should or shouldn't have done it. We don't really know the whole story. But um, he did. He definitely did something he ought not to have done. Yes. Um, and we don't know much of what is real or not real beyond that point. Sure. Um, but he, he's, he's – but I guess my point is what, whatever drove James to do that is, uh, you know, exists in all of us. Yeah. And um, – yeah, th- th- I yeah. think that is the point. Is like yeah. you're supposed to be able to see yourself in James. You're supposed to be able to relate to James, and therefore be able to see this is possible for me too. Yeah. Not oh, he's a monster, and then like oh, separate yourself from him. <laughs> I think that that's not what you're supposed to be able to do. It's mm-hmm. supposed to be cautionary in a sense, right? Like this is this can happen to me as well if I'm not careful, right? Like. Yeah. Even a good person can do something horrible like this if they don't do something about those real, natural human feelings of resentment, of frustration, sexual frustration yeah. that would occur in this scenario. If you're not able to express those feelings in a healthy way and you keep those repressed or bottled up and you, and you have no way of sort of like finding relief from that, like that's what's that's the path that's going to follow. And, and that's what you want to avoid. Yeah. So I was going to bring up crime and punishment here too, as well, uh, because uh, Raskolnikov has, a, is in a similar situation, uh, but it's a little bit more, sorry to spoil a 140 year old book. Um, <laughs> it's a little more, well, maybe it's like 150. It's um, there are other real people, definitely other real people in that book. Well, as it's a fictional book, but yes. <laughs> how do I, even, what am I even trying to say? They're um, not figments of, yeah. Uh, Rek- 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 imagination. Yes. And uh, to that degree, um, Raskolnikov, you do still pity him in some way where it's yes. like he had this idea of how the world worked and his idea of how the world worked was such that he could do this thing and it would be fine. And it's no big deal. And it turns out that's not how the world worked nope. and he was wrong and he's suffering horribly for it. But you know, towards the end of that book, him ending up receiving some punishment in prison or something like that, um, is a way that people can read that book and be okay with it. Right now. That's not how James doesn't end up turning himself in or anything. Right. In fact, no. as far as we know, the, as far as I know, he's <laughs> the only person in this whole town. Um, if, if even, if even that. And so 
it's going to end well. You don't want the game to end too sadly. And so in that sense, I get where they were going um, if they if that was the original, you know, the uncensored version, um, being like, hey, well, Crime and Punishment did it. We're going to do it here too. But it's like their stories are a little too different. I don't think they could quite get away with it. Yeah, with the same. And you need some type of a happy-ish ending. And Crime and Punishment does not really have that. No. Um, speaking on that, now that we're getting close to the end of the game, which ending did you get? Um, I got, uh, well, let me go to my notes here. So the very end is, um, where she says she writes a letter. I hated you. No, no. James says, James is talking. I hated you. I wanted you out of the way. I wanted my life back. All of this stuff, um, where she touches his face and he, uh, she's there on the hospital bed. Oh, the Maria Um, ending where you go off with Maria. No, I don't no, think not that so. one. I don't think. Oh, so. you're talking about the scene before the ending. So the one oh. where, where he and well, she well, okay. and he talk. What, what's the ending that changes? So, Actually, uh, I'm not really aware of this. Well, okay, I, we're getting ahead of ourselves again. There's Sorry, more stuff that happens, but there's the leave ending where James leaves the town through the graveyard, and Laura kind of runs ahead of him, and they both leave. Okay. There's another one where Maria. And James meet up at that pier where they first met. They have a I conversation, for and sure then didn't they that leave one. together. Okay. There's another ending called uh, "In Water," where James takes uh, Mary's corpse, gets into a car, and drives it into the river and drowns. Definitely didn't get that. Ending. Wait, what? Those are like the three main endings. <laughs> okay. And it, there, I it, think the rest of them you can't even get unless you do a replay. The, the graveyard sounds the most familiar. Okay, so um, he walked out and walking over. That's the most the common one. Okay, do. okay, that's the one that I. So the leave ending would likely, but it was yeah. like while the credits were going, right? Yes. Something like that. Okay, yes. that makes sense. Well, it's it's I, while the letters being read, I think. Well, uh, the full oh, the works. full letter being read. Yeah. That works. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have any notes for that, but that. I definitely didn't get the other ones, and that okay. one makes the most sense. So it sense. sounds like you got leave. I do remember... Yeah, I remember I remember the graveyard. I just didn't know which one was the ending and which one wasn't. Um, I got in water. Oh, really? So um, how do you do that? Did you play it on like a hard, a different mode? or? No, there's just things that you do naturally while playing that affect it. Okay. And I'll get into all of that when we talk about when we actually get to the ending. Let's not skip it too far <laughs> okay. because we got like pyramid head to talk about another scene with Angela um, and some other things to talk about here. So let's, uh, do you have any more notes leading up to when you see Angela for the last time? So I do um, because if we, we get this note over or we get like a message over our, um, the our radio, intercom, right? right? That's at the very so end. That's a very important. The thing radio to starts talking. Though. I almost so forgot about this. Th- well, this is great because it's like, finally we're like, we killed her, she's gone, this is over, it's done, right? Like, we came to acceptance. And then this voice comes on the intercom, and James is like, is Mary still alive? Yes. And it's like, no! And he gets, he allows himself to get, <laughs> to pulled, still get pulled back, pulled back down. down. Exactly right. And yes, so, right. yeah, and it, James had come to an acceptance, but now we go back, and you notice immediately as we start going down, we start entering into the darkness and the filth. Of the building, right? right? We start going down. This is where you realize right back into it's it. not exactly how how it was three years ago. He saw the building right, up until this point as it was three years ago. Yeah. Now he's seeing it as it really is. It's actually it burned down, and there's some other clues that li- that lead you to realize like when this might have happened because there's like um, there's like a some kind of um, entry that like uh, I think it was Rachel she would like write into and there's a certain date where it stops and the building is completely like burned down and there's okay. like the, the it's like leaking and like obviously some accident happened yeah where this building burned down but wow. anyways there's other context clues in the environment that lead you to that fact but he doesn't see the the building for what it is yeah. until he sees the tape and he realizes the Gosh, truth i just had the exact opposite reading of it <laughs> I thought that the building, the niceness of the building was, was the real how building, it really is. And that, that his imagination as he goes back into the dark recesses of his that, shadow is that's where he starts seeing all the filth and burnt and all the dirt. That's a perfectly valid way to look at it. I'm going to be know, honest dude, I don't because know. <laughs> there's so much about this game that's ambiguous Yeah, yeah. that, I mean, like you said earlier, you, you could read even the other characters as all being figments of his imagination mm-hmm, or you could read yeah. them as being real people. You could, so the, I don't think there's any wrong way to look at this really. 
okay. once you get like the main, uh, after getting like the main points. He was repressing his memories. He killed his wife. He realizes that he did that. Like the whole thing is a journey of him looking at himself in the mirror. Like yeah, that's yeah, really yeah. like the main yeah, point. Yeah. <laughs> so like beyond <laughs> that, there's tons of valid ways to read like what you're seeing because it's all very visual storytelling. There's not a lot of like express sort of a, uh, exposition or anything like that. So, you know. Okay. Yeah, so then we've got the buildings on fire and Angela's there and she thinks that we're her mother. <laughs> so Yeah, this is was, another uh, kind of interesting uh, piece of evidence that these characters are not seeing the same things. No, um, and it's not until she's yeah. like really close that she's like, she recoils again. And she's like, wait, yes. you're not her. What are you doing here? Yes. And um, the so the building's on fire. Now, notice before entering this room, this stairway, there was never a hint of a fire. Well, I guess the no. place looks burned. Right. But there, it's, there's, there's like a flood happening. Like it's not on fire currently. That's true, yeah. It's like until dripping. you see Angela. Then he's again crossing into her other world. What Where she she's sees. she's got something going on. Yeah. Right. More than what he sees. So the, the, another, again, yeah. piece of evidence that they're not seeing the same thing all the time. They aren't. Um, and, and, and she, she does hint at that. Because because he says it's yeah. hot as hell in here. Right. And she says, you see it too. For me, it's always like right. this. So, so she is life, always yeah. seeing flames everywhere in Silent Hill. Hmm. We're not seeing that. But she has always been burnt in a burning building. Now, as for why that is, it's total speculation. Um, the, 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 uh, the one way that I kind of liked to look at it is maybe she lost her mama in a house oh, fire or okay. something, oh. or you could look at it as her f whole world feels like it's constantly on fire around yeah. her yeah. or something like that. That, that, that could be what that represents. But for her, the world is always on fire around her all the time. Mm. And this is the first time James is realizing that as he's sort of like his world, other world, and her other world are sort of crossing yeah. or intersecting here. Um, so the stairway is on fire. And uh, let's see, she, uh, there's, there's kind of these, there's like this weird, it looks like a portrait, but it's actually not. It's like a recess that's framed. And oh. there's like a, there's like a fleshy canvas and yeah. there's almost like, it looks like a body is like sewn into it or something like that. Mm. Almost like it's a picture frame, but it's not really like, it's, 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 it's hard <laughs> it's to describe crazy. what it is, but that's kind of like on the side of her there. Um, when she, yeah, when she sees James, she mistakes him for her mama. Yeah. Um, she, she eventually says, thank you for saving me, but you shouldn't have. Yeah. Even mama said it. I deserved what happened. Um, yeah. that's tough. Yeah. That's right. like, but that's how, what happens to a lot of victims. Yeah. They, they yeah. end up blaming themselves for the abuse. Yeah. A lot of times the abusers put that idea in their head. I did yes. this because you made me mad. If only I you did didn't. Yeah. If you hadn't yeah. done that, then I wouldn't have lost my temper or that's common, yeah. whatever it might be. Right. Yeah. So that's common. Um, and that's when she asked James to give her the knife back and he refuses. And she says, saving it for yourself. We kind of went over that already. Right. Um, but she reaches kind of, again, in my reading of it, these are real people. So mm. Eddie failed his silent hill litmus test. Oh, right. uh, by not being able to stand up to or, or accept the mocking and the shaming and stuff and, and, you know, learn what he needed to learn or face up to what he needed to face up to, uh, when he tried to kill James. Um, and she is not able to face or, or, or resolve this trauma. And she decides to walk into the flames and kill herself. The whole game, she's struggling with suicide. Right. Cause she's got the knife and yeah. she's afraid what she'll do to it. She, she allows... James to take it. Um, at this point, she just can't take it anymore. She, I think she realizes her mother is gone. Another really interesting point, mm. when you find her, at the, where we find her at the very beginning of the game? The right? graveyard. In the graveyard. Yeah. She's looking, looking for her for mama her mom. and yeah. father and brother possibly in a graveyard. Why right. is that? Because they're all dead. Mm, now, go. let's see if I can find, there's, a, there's like a newspaper clipping says, the body of a man later identified as Thomas Orozco, a lumberjack age 39, was discovered in the middle of his room lying face up. The probable cause of death was multiple stab wounds to the front of the neck and the left side of the torso by a sharp-edged weapon. 
The estimated time of death was somewhere between 11 p.m. and 12.30 midnight. Due to signs of struggle in the room and the lack of a murder weapon, police are considering this a homicide and have opened a murder investigation. Furthermore, given the fact that the cash in the room was untouched and Mr. Orozco had a history of drunkenness and violence, the police suspect that the motive was not robbery, but some sort of crime of passion. Now, on the tombstone, Angela's tombstone, it has her full name, not just Angela. It's oh. Angela Orozco. Oh, really? So this is what connects oh. her to this man, Thomas Orozco, who was the father that she murdered. Okay. Uh, probably because he was abusing her. Um, and the other interesting thing is that the date on the newspaper suggests that this happened yesterday. So Whoa. she's right on the back wow. of having committed this crime and facing it in Silent Hill and all of that being represented in the horrors that she sees around her, her life being turned upside down, catching on fire, whatever you want to call it. Mm. It's all just totally gone to hell now. Yeah. Literally. Right. Um, huh. We talk about the fact that Mary could have died no sooner than at least within this week. Right. Based on Laura's birthday having been a week ago and she turned eight. So I feel like all these people are here right after having committed to the crimes that they committed. Mm. They were drawn into Silent Hill to sort of like right. learn or accept yeah. what they had like, done and deal with the, an, what an they an did. Atonement or something. Yeah. Right. Having to like really ra um, mm. find a resolution to what they just did. The shock of it was causing temporary sort of like repression of memories or mm -hmm. whatever it was. And now they have to come here and deal with it. So anyway, really interesting. That's another reason why I think that again, he could be imagining the newspaper. He could be, <laughs> <laughs> could all be figuring this imagination, but I, I feel like they, those are the real people. Um, so anyway, she, in, in the end, she can't take it. She fails her Silent Hill litmus test. She just walks into the flames and kills herself and realizes none of her family are even alive. And that's yeah. why she was in the grave when you first met her, looking for her family there yeah. because they're all dead, right? Um, okay, that's all mm. on my notes for the Angela scene. Yeah, I didn't have much else there either. Okay, so now we come into the final fight with the two pyramid heads. Yeah. Um, Maria's alive again. She's back. <laughs> Maria's back. Yeah. Uh, she's just, she's in one of those frames, kind of yep. like we saw from the paintings earlier, right? Yeah. With the, the executioners. But she's um, upside down. They've got her yeah. hung upside down. Yep. There's two of them now. Yep. Um, they impale her with a spear. So we yep. talked about the impalement being one of the execution, uh, methods they used in that civil war time. Oh, right, right, right. right. Um, and so he has to watch her die again. Pyramid head. Now, like you said, he had just accepted. Yeah. What he, he watched the tape. Yep. And then he heard Mary's voice calling him again. And, he and Pyramid Head alive. is like, all right, we need two of us to freaking convince him <laughs> this time. <laughs> That's pretty good. We got to kill Mary, Maria, I'm sorry, Maria. again. Yeah. And get him back on track because that yeah. was not enough. <laughs> so Pyramid Head is like at his last wit's end to like get him to stop yes. coming back to Maria. Now... What's really interesting about this is that there is an ending where he goes off with Maria at the end. So in the end, he fails his test in Silent Hill and goes okay. and, and tries to be with the figment of his imagination instead of... Anyway, we'll talk about that in the endings probably next okay. time. But there's so there's two of them. Once they again, kill her again. This is the third time she dies. So every, things happen in threes, right? Yes. Um it's almost, I wrote, it's almost like this will just keep happening until James accepts it. Yep. He's just going to have to keep watching, like Mary. watching her die. Well, again, and, and if we're seeing him as the shadow, right? Uh, Pyramid Head as the shadow yeah. of, of, uh, of James, reminding him by killing Maria, you killed your wife. You killed your wife. Yes. You killed your wife. <laughs> right. right. So not, that's not kind of the act go. of killing Maria is like a reminder of that. Yeah. Um, so I can't remember. Uh, this is before. This is before we fight them. I think um, he says, uh, "As soon as she dies, it's almost like immediate, right?" He's like, "No, don't kill her." And then she dies, and he falls on his knees, and he's like all upset. 
But then he starts, he like realizes, he just kind of slowly comes to terms with it, like right here in this moment, right? Yeah. He's not trying to save Maria. He just, he's starting to, it's just, you just see acceptance like happening to him as yes. if it was a verb. It was, it's a thing that's happening. And he says, uh, I was weak. That's why I needed you. I needed someone to punish me for my sins. Yep. It's over. I now know the truth. Now it's time to end this, right? Yep. And so this is him finally accepting it. I love this. I needed someone to punish me for my sins. Um, if you think that that's ridiculous or weird or unusual, uh, people do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> people want to be punished. People, in fact, sure. this is this is good. This is great. That's what guilt is, right? It is. It is. You're yeah. punishing yourself, and people yeah. say, "Don't punish yourself." And it's like, "Well, I can't help it." Well, yeah, your subconscious mind like has you, right? It's right. like in its grip. Um, yeah, I just watched this Korean drama last night <laughs> where <laughs> this exact thing's happening. This this woman who. She gives her child up for adoption, uh, but then she feels like she failed as a mother the whole time. And so she ends up readopting the child back later on, but mm. won't reveal that she's the real mother. Uh. And she ends up being just horrible and all the, like, she she's not a good mother. Um, but, like, eventually the girl finds out and it's this thing. But she was punishing herself by not allowing that child to call her mom. She was like, you don't ever call me mom. She, it was, her name was Madame and it was like this whole different thing. Yeah. But as soon as that child calls her mom, she like breaks and she's like, I, cause she feels like she's so guilty. The guilt was like ruling her life. It yeah. was ridiculous. Anyways, right. don't mean to talk about Korean drama. <laughs> um, but that's more or less what's happening here. It happens to people all the time. It's happened to me before. It happens. You like, when sure. you feel guilty, it just racks you and you torments you and you just. You feel you, like you deserve it. You feel like you deserve it. And. It's almost like you can't be objective about it because if you try to be objective about it, you might deserve it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But no one is harder on you than yourself. Sure. Right? Sure. And at some point enough is enough, right? Yeah. And, you know, and that's why whenever things happen and people are feeling guilty, it's like, you know, at least, at the very least, give them some time, Right. But at some point, someone needs to help them. Like somebody needs to help people get out of it. Yeah. Uh, like Eddie's saying, yeah, I'll never be forgiven. It's like, yeah, I he did some jacked up stuff. <laughs> at some point, though, like you need to move on. And it, like in Crime and Punishment, that meant him going to jail. Yeah, and fa right. fair enough. But that's moving on. That's, that's, accep accepting, that's accepting punishment and moving on with your life. Yeah, right. And who knows? Maybe at some point in 20 years, you can come back out and try again and be better. Um, but... Anyways, that's uh, that's more or less what I have. So he says, now it's time to end this. Um, so Maria does not come back this time because he no longer needs her. It's whenever he, whenever his heart hurt too much and he really just needed Mary to come back in some way, it was always Maria. But once he accepts the truth, he no longer needs Maria. Maria is not helpful to him anymore. So in a way, I wrote, um, Pyramid killing Maria was like himself killing her. Um, that yep. final time. So yep. Pyramid kills Maria and it's like he finally kills her off in his mind. Yep. It's like she's gone and he end the end he ends the projection, right? So he's no longer externalizing something that he doesn't understand. He understands now. Yeah. Well, and what do they do, the pyramid heads, in this moment of realization in this moment of acceptance they just turn the spirit they on impale themselves, themselves and kill that themselves was so I, right? I still am trying to think of what that means <laughs> like in part it's like they sacrifice themselves they give themselves up to for for, well, for james but also it wasn't even that james had to kill them no it's that james just had to accept the truth and then they don't Took care of themselves. There's no purpose for them anymore. Yeah, and I was thinking, well, maybe, well, like, why did they have to kill themselves? But maybe they they could have just stopped fighting. But I'm like, no, if they're standing there still, and it's a video game, you want to win, yeah, you know? Right. It's like they gotta die. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that was a good way to do it. But it was yeah. so interesting. I was thinking like really hard about that. Yeah, it's it's just that their purpose, Pyramid's head purpose, has been fulfilled. He led James to the acceptance that he needed right. to have there. And now he doesn't feel the need to punish himself anymore. Right. And we'll talk about that more in the scene where he talks to Mary in her sick oh, bed after, there yeah. because she's dead. He's not actually talking to her, right. but she's saying He's things accepting. like it's time to let go. It's time yeah. to stop punishing yourself. It's time to move on. That's not her really saying that to him. It's not her forgiving him. It's him 
talking to himself. Yes. Right? Yeah, you're right. It is. It's him talking to himself, but not in the way that Maria would talk to him. Right. Because remember the whole thing was like, you sound like her, but you're not really her. Yes, right. But but this time, it seems like it really is Maria. Yes. Which, and, and so the only thing that Maria, that Mary, sorry, the only thing that Mary really had left to say to him was this. Yeah. And that he knew it this whole time. He always knew it. And so that way, when these words come out, he can accept that this is Mary talking. Whereas yes. any other time he was projecting something that didn't really happen, you right. know, um, it was always Maria. It wasn't Mary. And it was always like something else was going on. But in this case, it was Mary because it did feel real. It, it really was something she really would have said or done or something like that. Yeah. Um, instead of just a projection of what he secretly wants Mary to say, it was like a down to earth, like a real truthful statement. Sure. And so, yeah, there's no more need for them yeah. anymore. There's no so, more need for self-punishment. So they... <sighs> They impale themselves, they, so they go out. away. And so you I come here, through a long hallway. I've Is got that a little more. One yeah. more? So I, just my note here. Um, he admits killing Mary a second time. The pyramids' heads kind of kill themselves, and that's that. He stops externalizing his shadow, too. So that's the thing. He stops externalizing Mar- Maria when she dies. He now stops externalizing the shadow, meaning that he's integra- He's putting. He's pulling them back it. where they belong, which yeah. is inside of his mind. He's, he's pulling the anima. He's pulling Maria back inside of himself. He's pulling the shadow back inside of himself. Um, so there's no more enemies like from this point, right? He's now entered the realm of acceptance. He no longer externalizes those parts of himself. Instead of being scared and terrified that his shadow self killed his wife, he now sees um, the necessity, right? He, he sees the truth. Eros and Thanatos and their forever quarrel have stopped having so much power over him. Once he sees past it, it's like it's just over. It ends all at once. Yeah. Uh, but then once we kill them, we get these two eggs. There's a, a rust-colored egg and a scarlet-colored egg. Mm. I don't really know what these. I mean. didn't take any notes on. Once this. <laughs> again, it's just two things, right? So they open the doors. It's just it's like a key, it's a key, but it's an egg. Um, one of them's rust and the other one's scarlet. So the eggs, eggs in general, represent newness and rebirth. Well, I just wanted to say red is love and blood and all of that. And then rust is just like oldness and something that's like past its prime, I guess. It's been used. It's it's um, fading away, right? It's, it's going away. Yeah. Whereas the red is the vibrant. It's life. It's blood. It's newness. And so you have both of those. You have these two things together, right? Um, and then the rebirth is like the newness of life. So anyways, that's really good stuff. And then I'm on to the staircase. Let me just say the fourth not joke ending of this game is yeah. rebirth. Oh, really? But this is only one you can get on a second playthrough. You can't get it on oh, a first okay. playthrough. So that's why I think we should save it for next okay. time. Okay, well, I, I so, can't wait. <clears throat> yeah, so the four kind of like main canonical endings of Silent Hill 2 are leave, Maria, in water, and rebirth. And then you have the joke endings, which are dog and UFO. Um, but uh, the rebirth ending is one, I think, that gets a lot more context when you've played the subplot for Maria. So oh, okay, cool. I think we should save that one for next time. Okay. Uh, did you have anything I'm on to the staircase. This, okay, so yep. this long hallway, right? You go down this long hallway, you hear a conversation between James and, Marie, and M- Mary. Uh, he, he, he had brought her flowers in the hospital, and she's rude and berates him. You know, for this, um, I don't deserve that. I'm disgusting. I'm ugly. How, mm. you know, why are you still here? Go away. I don't want you around. She goes into a tirade and then you're still here. Obviously, he had tried to hang around and like suffer through it. And yeah. then she's like, no, get out. Like, I don't want you here. But then she turns as he seems to have left. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean yep. what I said. Just tell me I'll be okay. Well, that's I'm so I, scared. Yeah. I'm obviously she wants him there. But she's doing the same thing. She feels guilt. Yes, yes, yeah. That she's ruining his life. Yep. And so she's punishing herself. Yes, by, of course. By projecting outward like this and pushing him away. But she doesn't actually want him to go away. This is something that yeah. people do too. People and do it, this. It, Everyone does this. People act yep. against their own interest all the time. All the time. Because they think they deserve whatever. Yeah. So that's what she was doing. Well, once again, that's the Eros Thanatos struggle. That's yeah. the half of her that wants to live and the other half of her that just wants to be done, to be gone. Yeah. So uh, you get basically that whole scene. And uh, what's interesting about it, and this actually affects one of the endings, mm. you can, it, you, you, you're walking kind of slowly through the hallway and you can get to the end of it before you, that scene ends. And you can just go through oh. the door without finishing it. But if you stop, you'll get like the full thing 
I feel like I did right. that. Right. I, I think most people probably would want okay. to hear the full conversation. They'll yeah. probably stop until it ends. But if you're wanting to get, in particular, the Maria ending, where you go off with Maria at the end, you'll just kind of cut that conversation off before oh, it's really? over. And oh, go interesting. Through. So that's one way that you ah, affect endings. Nice. Um, okay. So then you reach uh, the room where Mary is. Okay. Now, we. we Climb up a huge bunch of stairs yes. first, like a long. And th- yes. the creators of this game, they did a great. It's always intentional when it's a long, yes. transitory scene, right? right? Whether it's going through the forest down into Silent Hill, or rowing the boat across the lake, or climbing up the staircase, right? right. Um, it takes a while, and it's like, why? Why are they having me do this repetitive thing so much? But um, you know, it. it it all means something, right? It, like he's really emphasizing the fact that we're climbing up, we're going upwards. We just jumped through a billion black holes, right? So mm-hmm. now we've got a long ways to climb. There's no easy way. It's easy to fall down, but it's hard to climb up. So we've got a long climb going all the way back up. And this is akin to something like Jacob's ladder, right? Yeah. So in, in, in Genesis, uh, Jacob's ladder was never meant to be a ladder at all. Technically it was more like a staircase. Yeah. Um, but not just any staircase. It was actually probably something of a ziggurat, but no matter, it could more accurately accurately be called Jacob's Stairway. Um, this is also shown at the end of the movie, uh, Jacob's Ladder, but we'll we'll talk about that next time. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so now we come to this room yep. without a roof. So this is where the endings start diverging, is in this scene where you find Mary kind of at the top. Okay. So this can play out in a, in a few different ways, um, but for the most part, you're gonna, what you're going to find is Maria in Mary's form. So not in the Maria sexy version, oh, but in, right. the, in the Mary, like uh, the, the dress that she wore when she was sick. By the way, when I talked about it, I just remembered this, um, in an earlier episode, the mannequin that you find the flashlight on, and I was oh, like, oh, yeah, did you yeah, see those yeah, clothes? Yeah, yeah. That, those were Mary's clothes. Okay. On the mannequin I, there. Okay, so. cool. Um, anyways, nice. she's in Mary's clothes and she's got Mary's hair and she's, you know, she's not, Mar- but this is Maria. And mm. James recognizes her as Maria right away. Remember the whole time he had been confusing her. Like, oh, is that you, Mary? Oh no, it's Maria. Right. Yeah. Now he recognizes that it's Maria, not Mary, even ah, though the, he should. That's a good catch. He should. Yeah. In this form, definitely mischaracterize her or mistake who it is, but he can tell it's not her. Uh, so yeah. that's how it is in most of the endings. In mm. one of them, it is the real Mary. And this is in the mm. Maria ending. If you get the Maria ending where you go off with Maria uh, at the end, then this really it's was. actually Mary you're confronting and she's laying in a bed. Oh, so really? it plays out a little differently. Interesting. But the, 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 I guess the, the, the main thrust of it is Maria is trying to, for a last ditch effort to get you to be with her. Yeah. She doesn't want to be forgotten. She, she right. wants James to accept her instead of Mary. So her last ditch effort is to look exactly like Mary and kind of deceive him into it. But he, he sees past and he says, I'm through with you. Right. Mm. And, and her response to that is more or less something like what, but I can be yours. I'll be with you here. Or yeah. I'll be with you forever. And I'll never yell at you or make you feel bad. That's what you wanted. I'm different than Mary. How can you just throw me away? So that's what's behind her motivation in this yeah. scene. She's trying not to be left behind or forgotten or be alone. You'll see this a lot. She hates being alone in the sub, uh, okay. scenario that happens. Um, so, but in the, in the other one, it's Mary who's saying, how could I ever forgive you for this? You, you hated me, you murdered me. Mm. And she's the one who kind of turns on you and you fight her oh, instead. Okay. So you either fight hmm. Maria or you fight Mary. Um, but there's just slight differences depending on if you got the Maria ending or not. Did you take any notes for their conversation or anything like that? No, uh, other than this one, the I'll never yell at you or make you feel bad. That's what you wanted. But she says it in an almost yelling, aggressive yes, tone that makes you feel kind of bad. <laughs> also, you you go back to the part where Maria really like yelled at him when he mistook her for Mary after the pyramid head thing. And she's like, oh, yeah. I was so scared. And yes, he's like, oh, yep. anyways, I'm glad you're alive. Anyways, yeah. what do you mean anyways? Like she berated and yelled at him. Yeah. And again, I feel like this is a cross of the idealized version of James's, like uh, the, the woman he ideally wants and yeah. the fact that she also has Mary's memories in her. So mm, like the, the conjunction of the two is what she's kind of like, 
dealing with. Mm. She's kind of parts both. And so, yeah, you're right. She does kind of <laughs> yell at him and make him feel bad in, in saying that. But even though she's trying desperately to say, oh, I don't want to do that. It's just, just her last ditch effort to try to like get him to not, you know, abandon her. Yeah, and that's um, what I've got here. She's offering him a way to stay living inside his own mind, a way to keep the delusions alive. Delusions are there, in part, to help you cope with the difficulties of life. If you want to give up the delusion, you must face and overcome the harsh reality. But the harsh reality is what caused the mind to create the delusion in the first place. So we're in a cycle that cannot be broken except through a tremendous struggle of will. That's this whole game. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Now, before we get into the next scene, which is, I mean, both the scene where he talks to Mary at her bedside and then the letter, the, mm. the full letter, the real letter that she wrote that was meant to go to him, that finishes off the, uh, what is it, the, how does it start off, the restless dreams? Thing. Oh, but it's like longer, right? The whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, which are both just beautifully written. Both of those, the scene and then the letter itself are just immaculately well written. It's, it's, yeah, it's I, perfect I, for I really, the ending of the game. I really liked it. Um, I, when you fight the boss, one of the mm. moves it has is it, it, it spits moths at yeah, you. Yeah, I noticed that, yeah. Now you remember the butterfly tattoo yes. that Maria has and you talked about what that symbolizes yes, or could yeah. possibly symbolize. So I wanted to get your thoughts on, because I just did a, you know, quick search on like what the symbolism of a moth might yeah. be. There's a bunch of things. I mean, moths and butterflies can both sort of represent transition, right? Because they both the kind of and, grow wings, yeah. And if you come out of the cocoon, you transform, yeah. and just, or transformation, transition, um, that sort of thing. But uh, there are differences in the way people perceive a moth, which is more scary than a butterfly, yeah, which yeah. is more beautiful. So I wanted yeah, to see exactly. if you had any thoughts on that 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 was only it it was the beauty versus the the rough like a moth is just a gross butterfly you know yeah and so um a butterfly being a departed soul it, a part of the reason it's a departed soul is because of the beauty aspect of it you know you can look at it and you can see something of the 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 beauty of life in in a butterfly mm -hmm. um and then a moth shows up and it's like okay a moth may be a departed soul but it wasn't a beautiful soul right mm. a, a moth would be more of the departed soul that is not so fun to look at, right? And right. something that's maybe not so, not as beautiful. Um, now, I don't know that moths really represent departed souls, though, anywhere. So I, I know that butterflies do. Moths probably do, but I don't really know that. Again, I, hate moths. I haven't really <laughs> looked into it too much because I was just doing so much research. I didn't have time to really dig into this as well as yeah. I would have wanted to. But what I ended up landing on was something that I felt worked for this. Yeah. Um, so whoever wrote this blog is talking about someone named Bomb and Brunk. Have you heard that name before? So I don't know who that is. Mm -mm, no. Again, this is, I mean, like five seconds of Google search and clicking on the first <laughs> couple links. This is not like real, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, deep sort of like research into the symbolism. But um, maybe this is a good starting point for conversation. Yeah. So according to Bomb and Brunk, one of the main teachings of the moth is to assist in the transition between worlds. As aforementioned, many cultures viewed moths as emissaries from the spirit realm. Sure. To that end, they can also relate to endings within our lives, which bring with them new beginnings. And the yes, fact that's that, the cycle. That's the, yeah. Yeah, the fact that this is happening here at the end of the game, the end mm. of his journey, the transition, as it says... Um, assisting in the transition between worlds, coming out of the other world, back to the real world, back to oh, the true realization. interesting. Okay, sure. Yeah, you know, yeah. Maybe that's why they turned the butterfly into the moth as mm. part of the attack yeah. of the final boss. It's like, this is, the, this is the point. Maria is now serving to bring us out of the delusion and back okay, into the yeah. real world, from the other world into the real world. That makes Again, sense. That does make sense. It wouldn't best have... Best I could come up with. <laughs> the attack wouldn't have gone as well if it was butterflies. Yes, it, it would wouldn't. have felt yeah. a little too flowery. Sure. But it was moths, which is just... It's a similar symbolism. It's just yeah. a darker way of it's showing a, it. More of an ending. Yeah, yeah. An ending uh, or a death rather than the rebirth. That makes rebirth sense. Yeah, I like thing. that. That's good. And we'll talk about rebirth because that's one of the endings for next time. <laughs> but... Okay. Um, 
Let's get through. Yeah, she says, I'll never let you have Mary back. Then she transforms into an upside down kind of nun looking thing in yeah. a cage. Um, and then uh, there's possibly some upside down crucifixion imagery here too with the monster having a demon tail as well. Hmm. Just uh, kind of, you know, whips yeah. the tail around. Also, Maria was upside down as well when she died. Uh, this must mean That's something, right. but other than the idea of his of his um, inverted, like, how would you put this? Um, the idea of these, of Maria being an inverted version of Mary, right? There's like something mm, wrong. There's sure. something upside down sure, yep. about her. And yep. that's like how it's manifest, right? Yep. I don't really have anything else to read from that other than that. Uh, but I'm sure that the nun-like appearance is meant to seem like the Virgin Mary. That's kind of what I um, would have gathered here. That this mm. is something like a really dark, horror movies do this a lot. They'll have like a nun or something that's supposed to be really wholesome and and turn it into like a demon. Yeah. Um, so you kill. Yes. And then she says, James. And then we see us at Mary's bedside. Yes. And for my ending, I don't know if this is it, but it's, it plays out similarly, but there okay. are a few differences in dialogue. I are noticed, there? Okay. Uh, that just like really hammer home either that he really hated her for taking the life away or that he was torn between this. I didn't want you to suffer anymore. And yeah. I also really felt like you would take my life away. This is so, him yeah. apologizing for this one. Right. Yeah. And she says she wanted to die. She wanted the pain to end. And James yeah. says, I hated you. I wanted you out of the way. I wanted my life back. But then this is beautiful though. He holds Mary's hand to his face uh, when she, this is like as she's dying, mm -hmm. right? So she coughs and tells him to go on with his life. And then she dies. And then while touching his face. Um, the same way that Maria would always do that. Anytime Maria said, oh, see, do you want to feel, do you yeah. want to touch? She would reach out and she would touch, touch his, his cheek, face. right? Yeah. And that, but then um, I see the, like a memory happening with Mary um, that happened. And that's why anytime um, he would see Maria, Maria would do the thing that the last thing that Mary did um, when she died. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, yeah. That moment was actually really touching. I liked it a lot. Yeah. And so, uh, James, if that were true, uh, saying, because uh, uh, truth is that I hated you. Because first she yeah. says, I wanted to die or whatever. And then he says, well, that's why I did it, honey. I didn't want you to suffer anymore. Right. And then he's like, well, then he has to admit the, the whole point he's here. The truth is I hated you. I wanted you out of the way. I wanted my life back. But then she says in response, at least in the in water ending I got, James, if that were true, then why do you look so sad? And why are you here now? And why are you punishing yourself? And why all mm. this, right? And he says, Mary. And she says, James, please, please do something for me. And she hands him a note. The note is the letter that is read at the end of the game. Go on with your life. Now, the interesting part about this is, again, this is not really her. Because she's not alive. <laughs> she's dead. He killed her. She's not talking to him. So this is him talking to himself or projecting, right? So it's really him kind of forgiving himself yeah because she's no longer around to give forgiveness right so it's not that mary is forgiving him it's that he is moving past the punish myself uh guilt stage of this kind of like you're talking about uh raskolnikov in crime of punishment oh right you've got to like get past that where he's sick for days and he's just yeah, like he's hallucinating the shock of it all and yeah. you're moving past that you're accepting what you did it happened the denial stage of it is over the uh, bargaining stage is over you can't <laughs> like undo it anymore right um you can't go with this imaginary wish you were my real wife <laughs> idealized version yeah. i have to accept what i did and go on with life right Stop suffering, stop beating your, stop, stop punishing yourself, move on with it. You've suffered enough. Yeah. And you know, what I would think that would mean is you go admit what you did in the real world, like Raskolnikov does, you, you go to jail or you, you suffer yeah, what yeah. it is, but you move past the, whatever it is you're doing in this silent hill place. Right. Yeah. Um, then she hands him the note. So, uh, we're going to talk about endings next time. And so I think we should probably stop there. Okay. We'll read the In Restless Dreams note. We'll talk about all the different endings. We'll talk about the 
born from a wish sub scenario. Um, we'll talk about Jacob's ladder. <laughs> Jacob's ladder. Uh, we actually got a and, lot. We got a lot. Yeah, there's quite a lot. And then uh, again, I'll open some stuff up or I'll open up a post on Patreon for five dollar and up patrons who want to um, add to the conversation, ask us questions that oh, maybe yeah. we didn't we cover. Um, whatever it is, or, or, or say something to, to add to the conversation, anything that you want. Uh, I'll kind of compile those together and we'll go over those at the end of next time. So cool. next episode will be the final episode of Silent Hill. Uh, if you'd like to vote on which game we play after that, the poll is still open this week. It will be coming to a close at the end of this week. So um, feel free to hit it up. Patreon link is in the description. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time. Peace out.